bling. What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. The CZ-75 handgun design is perhaps one of the more popular designs to copy in the firearms industry. I can see why. It's robust, reliable, and frankly, a lot of fun to shoot. Various manufacturers such as Tanfolio, Rock Island Armory, more on that in a future video, IWI, and TriStar have all produced variants. Each manufacturer puts their own spin on the design to give us a different and unique experience, sometimes at a reduced price, and sometimes not. Recently, TriStar reached out to me to review one of their offerings, and I was, and still am, very excited at the opportunity. A huge thanks to them for reaching out. As I looked through their catalog, one model caught my eye, the T120. It's very reminiscent of one of my favorite guns in the collection, the CZ SP01. With a budget-minded MSRP of $494, I was curious to see if there were any sacrifices in quality or function. With that in mind, I decided to take the plunge on the T120, and now I want to share my thoughts with you. Let's see how it stacks up. All right, we've panned out a little bit to do a quick comparison. You guys seem to really enjoy that, so I'm gonna keep doing it until you tell me not to. Well, I brought out the CZ SP01. This is the Shadow Orange. Again, I swear there's a review coming on this. I keep getting distracted with other things, as we often do, especially as we get towards the holidays, but uh, I just thought I'd see how these two stack up. Again, saying that the T120 is very reminiscent of this, and boy, I'll tell you what it is. Both of these are coming in around eight inches in length and about five inches in height right here but uh, the, the one of the big differences between the two of course is going to be the weight uh, the t120 is actually a steel slide and an aluminum frame so it cuts down on that a little bit so it's coming in around 30 ounces or so in the sp01 significantly more i don't know if it's 34 or 36 ounces i don't have the specs on that out right now but uh, but certainly uh, a, a big difference in terms of weight so i was curious to see how that would impact the shooting experience more on that in just a little while but again just wanted to show you really quickly how it stacks up to another one in the comparison. So let's dive in a little bit closer on this and take a look at some of the features. All right, let's jump in and take a look at the features of the T120. Of course, you guys know I like to start on the grips. Now, it does have some plastic grip panels on them right now. They're not uh, rubber or G10 or anything like that. The texture on them is fine. I mean, it's it's medium, almost mild, so it's certainly not going to beat up your skin, beat up clothes if you wanted to carry something like this. Now, I would prefer a little bit more bite. I would prefer maybe some lock grips or something like that. You guys know I'm a big fan of lock grips, just to give it a little bit more bite um, and a little bit more character as well. But again, these will serve, and they certainly prove to be very comfortable. There's a, a smooth notch right here, uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to get to your magazine release, which is very reminiscent of uh, CZs. It is not ambi, by the way, although uh, you might be able to switch it. Um, I, I haven't really found that uh, too many people uh, have posted about switching these, so if you know about it, leave a comment down below, of course. And then we do have some serrations on the back, and um, and they, <laughs> they don't go very far down. I mean, I think it's very interesting that they did this, and I'm glad they did. I mean, it certainly breaks it up a little bit. Um, in terms of grip, again, I would prefer to see something uh, both vertical and horizontal just to give you a little bit more bite on it. Uh, but but again, the gun stayed relatively planted while shooting. And of course, more thoughts on that in a little while. And then on the front, again, we've got some serrations that are actually longer in front, uh, which was uh, actually interesting to me. I would have thought it would have been the opposite, but uh, but that's not the case here. Now, in terms of a uh, flared magwell or anything, this actually does not have it. And, uh, and of course, the, the camera always hates when I do this. Uh, so there's no flare there. Uh, might be a consideration for you if you are thinking about running something like this, perhaps for competition, and you want to get those magazines in there pretty quickly. So no flare, but uh, but again, it all worked just fine. And there is a nice cutout right here just to give you a little bit more, um, uh, you can kind of ride up on the gun a little bit more, and it's, it's quite ergonomic. That beaver tail is really nice. Of course, that prevents any sort of slide bite or anything like that. But overall, the ergonomics on this gun are certainly very good. Um, they're, they're perhaps not best in class, but uh, frankly, I don't think the SP01 is best in class either, uh, but but certainly good enough and, uh, and, and enough to where you could certainly spend a day at the range with something like this. 
As we move up the frame and take a look at the controls, one thing you will notice, there is not a decocker. This is actually a safety, and I found it's a little bit on the firm side. Um, now, of course, that would break in over time. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm not a big safety person. I, I would much prefer a decocker. But uh, for those who want to carry something cocked and locked, I mean, this would certainly be the way to go. Now, it is also not ambi. Um, I'm not sure if you can flip that around or not. And frankly, I don't know if you could maybe replace this with a decocker. I don't know if it's that type of uh, CZ design. So if you guys have done something like that with the T120, be sure to holler down in the comments and let everybody know. But, uh, but again, it's got the thumb safety. And then, of course, it's got your uh, slide lock, slide release. It proved to be just fine as both without uh, any sort of question. Now, this also is going to double as your takedown lever. Now, I've taken apart some uh, various CZs and videos. I'm actually not going to do it with this one. Um, I, you know, go back and take a look at maybe a PO1 Omega video or something like that. It's exactly the same. You're going to line up your lines um, here on the slide. And then you're going to have to push on this side the little button. You'll be able to pull your lever out. Then you'll be able to take off the slide and uh, and do all your cleaning and maintenance and everything. I mean, it's actually pretty easy to do. So uh, be sure to check out one of those other videos for that, just in an effort to save time. And then it does have an accessory rail for your lights, lasers, chainsaws, that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to hang anything off that, you certainly can. Um, it, not something that I would do, but uh, but but you've got the option there. Now, if you're curious about the overall finish of this, um, this actually is a Cerakote tungsten finish. And, and I, I really like it. I think it's a really cool look. The gray and black on it, um, I think is quite unique. Um, now it's pretty smooth. Um, it's not really a matte finish. It's kind of kind of halfway between the two. But again, from a, a style standpoint, uh, the frame actually looks pretty cool. And the last thing you'll notice here, the uh, dust cover actually is slanted quite a bit. Um, again, I think that's really kind of a cool look. It's reminiscent to something like uh, the Jericho, if you're uh, familiar with that. So, and I haven't had an opportunity to, uh, to test out the Jericho, but uh, hopefully I will at some point in time. And then we do have a little bit more texturing uh, here on the front of the trigger guard as well. So again, the frame, I actually really like. I mean, I think they've done a good job. I'd like a little bit more texture uh, on the grip. That's just me. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise, I really like it. In terms of the slide, here's where the styling certainly gets very unique, and I've been very impressed with this. Now, you'll notice most of the slide is actually smooth, and there's not anything going on here. No uh, roll marks or stamps or anything like that. I mean, it's very minimalistic, um, with the exception of the T120 on the frame, but I, I like this. I think it's actually <laughs> really pretty cool. And then you'll notice there are some rear serrations, and one thing that's very unique about this, they're fish scale. You know, it's reminiscent of something like an m &P, uh, and 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 I, I like this. I mean, there's certainly quite a bit of bite, and as you guys know, with CZs, I'll get, them, get rid of the magazine for a moment, sometimes because of the real estate, you guys know that those rails sit inside the slide just like that, that there isn't a lot to grab onto, but these serrations are fantastic. It's really cool, and uh, for a lot of people, and these guns I think were primarily designed when you wanted to run the gun, you would run it like that. Um, and, and I think that makes a lot of sense there. So again, I really like the serrations. I like the look of that slide. We do have some serrations up top as well to reduce glares. You're looking down your sights. Now in terms of sights, we do have just a standard uh, three white dot setup, no night sights, uh, no fiber optics or anything like that. I imagine you can switch them out very similar to some of the CZs like that SP01, but, uh, but these sights prove to be just fine at the range. Of course, I prefer something a little bit more HD, of course, but, uh, but you know, these definitely serve. So overall, I think the package of the T120 is actually a really attractive look. It's very comfortable as well. So uh, we'll talk about the shooting experience here in just a moment. The shooting experience with the T120 far exceeded my expectations. Now, there were a couple things I was really curious about. The grip on this is a little bit wider than I prefer with most firearms. Uh, you know, I come from a 1911 background, so I like a slightly thinner grip. Even though these are a little bit chunkier, I, they actually were incredibly comfortable, so I was surprised about that. Now, again, I would want more grip texture, of course, but in terms of the size and the sculpting of it, everything worked out just fine. Now, as I mentioned before, this is an aluminum frame gun, and anytime you lighten up a gun, you have the chance to feel a little bit more recoil, there might be a little bit more muzzle flip, that sort of thing, and, and for me, with full-size firearms, I, I definitely suffer from that. This gun actually surprised me, even though it is lighter than something like an SP-01, it was remarkably controllable, and, uh, and that was really cool. Now we're going to talk about the trigger in just a little bit, but that of course lent to the shooting experience. Now the sights did fine, I was able to pick them up on the range without any sort of an issue. Again, I prefer some HD callouts, uh, but that's what the aftermarket is for, so no big deal there. 
And then also the magazines are compatible. This is a 17 round magazine in the firearm and any of your CZ 75 magazines will work. So I was able to take a bunch of different magazines with me uh, just to make it a little bit more of a streamlined experience as well. So if you're curious about that, they definitely do work. Overall though, the shooting experience again was a lot of fun. I was pleasantly surprised and the T120 was a great performer. Sometimes the thing that can make or break a shooting experience is, uh, is actually the trigger. So let's take a look at that for a moment or two and see how it does here. Now the uh, double action pull on this came in around 10 and a half pounds. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively stout trigger. However, I have to say, even though it's stout and you'll see it stacks a little bit, it's got a half cock, which is kind of nice. Even though it stacks, it's actually incredibly smooth right there. I mean, it really is. I mean, I, I have to work at it a little bit. It's like I said, it's stout, but it actually is pretty good. Now your reset, I want to get my finger out of the way. Your reset is right there. Now the reset is out quite a ways, but then the wall is actually right there. That's probably my favorite part of this trigger. And I don't mind a reset that's further out as long as your wall is right there. So let's look at our uh, single action, which is coming in around five pounds, just a little bit over. So your single action, really pretty smooth it really is and then again let's look at that reset it's out a little ways but there's your wall again it made it just a lot more fun that's one thing about double action single action triggers and i've said it multiple times that if there's a lot of air or a lot of space between the reset and then coming back to the wall that it's an opportunity at least for me to kind of waver a little bit wag a little bit uh, so it, that gets me off target i find that to be especially true with something like a po7 or whatever which are great guns but i just have to be more mindful of that this wasn't the case with this there is a short enough reset back to wall that it made it just a lot of fun. It was more accurate. I was able to get on target and shoot a little bit quicker, which was really pretty cool. So as far as triggers go out of the box, this has actually been really impressive. All right, it occurred to me that I might get a little bit of flack for not taking apart the gun. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is your takedown lever, it doubles as your slide lock and slide release. And then on the slide and the frame, you're gonna notice two little lines right here. And the objective is to line these guys up. And I actually do all that with my left hand. Now, as far as the hammer goes, you'll notice it's down. You can do it uh, when, when it's fully cocked or you can do it when it's all the way down. It really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it when it's down. It works just fine. But basically with my left hand, and I'm going to get it started with my right, but with my left hand, I'm going to be supporting the slide and the frame. And then you'll notice that there is a little button right there and we are going to have to push that in. And so I actually am going to be doing that with the bottom of the magazine because it's plastic. It's not going to hurt the finish on the gun or anything like that. And you'll notice I've pressed it in and the lever is partially out. So I'm just going to drag the rest of it out with uh, my hand here. And now we've got everything ready to disassemble and the slide is just going to come right off and there it goes and guys basically everything else is as you would expect with most other modern firearms right here we've got our slide we've got our barrel and we've got our spring and guide rod assembly i'm not going to pull the rest out it's it's exactly as you would expect for any other firearm there aren't any extra sleeves or anything you need to get out no complicated parts or anything like that and the maintenance on this is extremely simple now there's a good picture of your uh, slide rails that go all the way across it's one of the reasons why these guns are so fantastic i mean they're very solid and uh, they're they're just structurally sound. So to put it all back together, we're just going to reverse the process. There's a picture of your frame, but we're going to get our slide and put it on our frame. It'll take a moment or two. And we've got everything kind of lined up. So we're going to take our disassembly tab and it's going to sit out basically like this. You can't put it in any further until you start moving your slide forward again. And then it's going to go partially in and you want to line those lines back up just like we did before. And then miraculously, the tab will go back in and now your gun is together. You can do a function check if you like, and it's all working just fine. But that's your disassembly and reassembly of the TriStar T120. So guys, what do I think of the TriStar T120 overall? Well, overall, I think it's fantastic for a budget-minded firearm. And when I say that, that's not a bad thing. That's not a, there's no stigma attached to that. All that means is you're spending less on a decent gun like this, and then you have more money to either buy more guns or ammo or training or whatever it happens to be. So uh, if you're looking for a double action, single action firearm in the full size frame arena, this is definitely worth considering. It's got some very unique styling to it. That tungsten gray is fantastic. 
fantastic. Now they have some other colors as well, but I was very attracted to this. And I like the black furniture on it. I think the slide is really cool. Those fish scale serrations. Uh, the grips are okay. They're not my favorite, I'll admit, and um, I would prefer some better sights on it. But again, out of the box, all of these will serve. They'll do just fine, and you have the opportunity to switch things out as you need to. It takes CZ75 magazine, so if you've got other ones lying around, you don't need to go run out and buy more, which is really cool. And that trigger was surprisingly good. I was very impressed. Now, some people say that reviewers get special guns that have been tuned by the manufacturer. Guys, that is not the case. They pulled this gun off the line for me at my request and sent it out. So this could potentially have gone to another consumer. Uh, so there's there's no special treatment. I, perhaps that can happen from time to time with certain manufacturers, but I haven't experienced that yet that I know of. And again, this came straight off the line, it was supposed to be a, a gun for sale. So uh, once again, mad props to uh, TriStar for sending this along to offer my thoughts to you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity. And again, uh, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. If you've had some experiences with uh, TriStar or any of the other CZ clones, I'm really excited to have a conversation with you about that. Guys, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.